welcome to uh, this joint webinar. So between ourselves, Connex and Total Control Pro. Um, I'm not going to talk for very long, to be honest. I'm going to hand over to to our uh, joint hosts, Laura and Cara, to introduce themselves, and then we'll get started. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of a Q&A. So after the first kind of 10, 15 minutes of an introduction and presentation, uh, we'll allow you to unmute and ask any questions that you have. Um, but essentially, we're, we're running this uh, webinar, as I say, in, in partnership together. Um, so those of you that don't know Connex, uh, we're a, a organization to connect UK manufacturing, essentially. So we, we've got a community of manufacturing members all across the UK, um, and we're here to support, connect, facilitate projects, um, and ultimately encourage collaboration across the sector. Um, so most of you, I believe, that are on this call now are connected with me on LinkedIn. So feel free to drop me a message uh, as and when you need to. Um, so I'll hand over to Dolores to start with, and you're going to give a quick introduction on your side of things. Um, and then we'll jump over to Cara, and then we'll come back to yourself, Dolores, to go into the presentation. So over to you. Very good. Thanks so much, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this lunchtime. Um, we wanted to have the opportunity to highlight a couple of things once one our role at uh, Total Control Pro and the um, opportunity we have through the Smart Manufacturing Data Hub and uh, the Lighthouse Project, um, but also expand out the opportunities and invite Cara to share with you how you can get involved, not just through us, but in other ways as well. Um, so uh, I've been part of, I'm actually on the strategic board of the Smart Manufacturing Data Hub because my um, I, I got my original Women in Innovation Award because of what, creating benchmarking data across manufacturers and looking to how we can bring that kind of data and information together to serve all manufacturing. And this project really is just an extension of that for me. So it was absolute delight to be involved. Um, but further to that involvement with the board, I've now become part of through Total Control Pro and our Dynamics product, um, being able to offer a lighthouse um, solution as well. So we'll explain a bit more of that in a second. But first of all, I'm going to hand over to Cara, who will share a bit more about what the Smart Manufacturing Data Hub is and what other opportunities there are. Thanks, Dolores. Um, so I'm Cara Roberts. I'm one of the business development managers on the SMDH Smart Manufacturing Data Hub project. Um, so just a little bit of background really on the project to begin with. Um, so the SMDH project is um, a Made Smarter Innovation funded project and it's a UK wide funded project. Um, so Ulster University are the lead partners. Um, and then we've got about 12 other partners across the UK sort of working on the project. So, um, for example, we've got um, the Data Labs in Scotland, uh, the Hartree Centre, um, Cambridge University um, and lots more. So it's a very sort of well connected um, project. It's focusing at um, manufacturing SMEs um, across the UK to help them sort of look at their 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 sort of factories their sort of you know anything that they do and harness the power of their data so how basically the whole project is looking at data how we can gather data data um and actually analyze that to make you sort of more like productive um leading on to like a digital sort of factory that's like the end goal um but obviously everybody's very different on that journey. Some people have got no data or they think they've got no data, but when you actually speak to them, they realize they are they are collecting data but don't realize it. Um, there's there's companies then who are sort of collecting data and starting to analyze it. Um, and then there's other companies that are really good at it already. Um, so it's helping you know manufacturers all throughout that journey, depending on where you are. Um, so through the um, SMDH project, we've got a few different offers of support available. Um, so we've got sort of free offers of support where we can sit down with companies, go through our diagnostic and sort of identify areas that they've sort of got challenges um, with. Oh, my screen's gone funny. Um, so we can look at sort of like a nice, simple one that we usually start with with companies who have not really looked at data before would be like our energy trackers. Um, so with that, we can sort of, you know, get access to your energy data, um, 
you know, from your energy suppliers and then put that into our system and create nice dashboards to identify nice, easy sort of cost savings. Um, so that's always a nice sort of entry um, into sort of managing your data and seeing some really quick um, wins. Um, and then we can also provide free IoT sensors. So they're sort of sensors that go onto machines um, to monitor things like power, temperature, vibration, um, and they can, they'll collect that data and we can create dashboards and do analysis of that. Um, and we do like comparisons against different machines and look at sort of, um, uh, yeah, so look at sort of shift patterns and do that in comparisons and things as well. Um, and then we do more like bespoke data projects. So we might have companies that are already sort of collecting data um, and want some analysis on that. Um, so it could be something like sales data or scrap data. So we can do a really bespoke project on that with our data scientists to sort of gather that data, analyze it, pick out trends um, and, you know, create some dashboards and, and sort of present that back to you. Um, so it's sort of mixed and we can support you depending on how far you are on that journey. Um, then within the SMGH project, we've got the Digital Innovation Fund. Um, so this is a pot of funding that we've got to give out to SMEs, to sort of universities and to low cost solution providers. So there's different pots of funding available within that. So we've got the Lighthouse projects, which is what we're gonna be talking about today the rapid demonstrators and the um, virtual manufacturing digital twin offering. Um, so under the Lighthouse projects, um, sort of low cost solution providers have applied for funding to sort of help um, SMEs to sort of, you know, install or have their um, solution in, in their sort of um, company. So we've so far um, awarded six lighthouses across the UK. Um, so we've got Output Industries in London, Dev Tank in Derby, my area, um, Flow Lens in Northern Ireland and Enmis in Northern Ireland, um, in Scotland and QMS Belfast as well. Um, so they're all offering different sort of solutions to um, SMEs. So we've got sort of um, we've got sensor solutions, we've got performance monitoring software, um, and then um, like MRP systems. So it's all sort of different offerings that are available. And these are sort of offered to um, the companies free of charge through the lighthouses, um, like Total Control Pro. Um, so what I'm going to do now is hand you over to Dolores, who is one of our awarded lighthouses in our first round. Um, and she's going to sort of go into a little bit more about the offering and how you can get involved with that. Um, but if you've got any questions about the SMDH project or want to sort of have a chat about how you could maybe apply for some funding or get some support, then, you know, I'm open to sort of having a chat with anybody. But for now, Dolores. Thanks, Cara. That's brilliant. And a, no, and quickly, a good overview. Quickly jump in. Sorry. Please do, Sam. Um, just... Just to mention that I have kept the chat function open within here. So if anyone's got any questions while we're while Dolores is giving us a 10 minute or so presentation, feel free to uh, drop any of that in the chat. And if Dolores sees it while she's presenting, I'm sure she'll answer. If not, we'll make sure we're after at the end. Over so to do you want me to run the presentation, answer the chat? <laughs> like, of course. I, I love this multitasking. It's actually it's, it's, it's absolutely great. Um, so thanks, Cara. That's absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, uh, that overview of the whole of the SMDH. I rather like the, the name of being called a lighthouse, the idea that we can help guide the ships safely into harbour um, on the digital journey uh, by providing both the solution and also an understanding of the digitalization journey. Um, it, it, it kind of appeals to me. I'm sure it appeals to Sam and his background of being down in Cornwall as well, that safe safe harbour. Um, but also I'd like to thank um, the Connex because it is all about collaboration. And actually the opportunity through the Lighthouse is not just to find new customers or provide kind of one-to-one -one service, but really expand the opportunity for collaboration between manufacturers and solution providers and between manufacturers and other manufacturers as well. So um, the manufacturing operations 
management is what Dynamics MFG platform is about. We are about providing the opportunity to get data from the shop floor to the top floor and then utilize that real time data to make to make your services more and more efficient. Ultimately, we are so wait, if we see if we change slides, there you go. Um, we are about uh, helping helping manufacturers produce more, waste less, and optimize the use of their resources. And sometimes that's because we have a skill shortage. It's a big area that especially the guys at Connex can um, spend a lot of time sort of discussing. But it's using those skills more effectively, enabling the um, the skills that we have to be used where needed, and bringing other other areas into play when needed as well. But producing more and waste less is really about that productivity uh, gap we're trying to breach. Um, that can be about better understanding of the data on the shop floor. That can be better understanding of supply chains. That can be better understanding of how to maximize your machines. Um, and as Cara said there, some of the projects are very specific in one of those areas. But um, through our Dynamics Manufacturing Platform, what we're aiming to do is give the overall context. So we will take a demand, what is needed to be made or what is in the supply chain request, you know, from a customer, from a web link, whatever that's coming in. And we'll look to first and foremost, create a digital factory. So a digital representation of how your factory operates. So how many people, how many machines, when can they work, what conditions of satisfaction they need to be in operation, on off, et cetera, et cetera. And actually that's the first stage of information we're providing through to the SMDH is the context in which everything else is operating. I often say it's great to have a sensor telling you if a machine is on, but why is it on? What's it making? How efficient is it in providing the end-to-end the -end on time delivery of that item? Or is it optimizing efficiency in its own cell, but operating without the context and without full sight of the of the entire factory. So we aim to take the, the data points from each of those areas, manpower, machines, demand, operating time, and actually coordinate and bring those all together with the demand so that you can get more and more efficient manufacturing. Now, that's the dream. And it takes a journey. There's a step to get there. You know, step by step, we can get to the ultimate solution. So we often know that when uh, manufacturers start on the digitalization journey, or as Cara as said, they may have some data, but they're not sure what that's actually providing. It can be a challenge. And MadeSmart themselves identified that 72% of all digital um, transformation projects actually fail. And that's not what we're committed to. We're not, you know, as a, as a as a as the Made Smarter program, they're committed to actually moving and improving that productivity. So it's really important that you start somewhere and you start small. You know, have a clear roadmap of the journey that you want to get to at the end, but actually learn and iterate as you deploy. Uh, you can again, you can put a couple of sensors in to get some information. You can put some data points to get some information. You can get real-time information off your shop floor before you start to do incredibly smart planning because it's got to be based in reality. And uh, we very much want to take our clients on that journey of, of understanding the end point, but how to get quick wins along the way, but don't take their eyes off the long-term plan because there are times when those quick wins get in the way of the ultimate goal. And then learn, analyze, iterate, improve, which is, is really what every good um, sort of agile process will utilize. We also like to follow the um, digitalization pathway and its role of technology that was set by Made Smarter. So data capture, let's understand what's really going on. Data visualization, let's see what we, we're capturing. Sometimes data is there, it's coming off the machine, but no one can really see it in a way that they can do anything about it. You know, the, the old days of and on lights on, on your machine, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. It's great if you can see the lights, but it needs to go to the right person at the right time so they can actually do something about it and, uh, and actually take, a, take the effective action. With the data visualization, you can then start to look at patterns. Has this happened before? Are there some standard operating processes when this happens? Uh, is there, you know, can we manage by exception? Are we looking at alerts? What's needed to actually ensure that that the running and the flow happens together? And then also 
baked into the Dynamics platform, um, but as part of this overall technology um, route forward, you can start to look at autonomous decision making. Now, in the first state, aim it could just be, you know, your QC test is automated and it pass fails, and if it fails, it stops and something happens. But also some of our projects and working with some of our clients that can start to get into smart planning, bet, uh, planning to better um, times. Uh, what is your average or what is your general time per process, per product? Are we planning 140% capacity? Are we planning to 80% capacity? As uh, someone pointed out to me, if you take the average time and always plan to your average time it takes to make something, you're, you're late 50% of the time. And who wants to be late? We want on time in full at 90, 98, 100 percent. So you need to look at what kind of decisions are being made when that comes in. Now, it's not my belief that 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 especially SME manufacturers are ready for a fully autonomous AI driven planning solution. Um, but there are definitely steps in which we can flag a, a decision can be made here. And this is the weight of data that's leading to that decision. And then the production managers and the top floor, or whoever's involved can make the decision to accept that or to do something else. So it's about a partnership in that decision-making at the moment, but flagging where decisions can be made or can be automated, auton auton whatever that word is. Now, the other thing I think is important is uh, on this digital journey is to cut through the understanding of what types of technology there are there and we hear quite often are you an ERP are you a MES are you a um, are you connecting sensors are you this are you that and ultimately we aren't um, you know we're not an ERP because we weren't designed from an from a tech from an accountant's perspective or resource only a resource material perspective we're not just a MES because we're not just capturing data off the shop floor and we're not only capturing machine data. We are very much connecting people into the process. So we basically say we're everything generally a small to medium sized manufacturer needs um, that takes the data from the workshop through and up to the top floor so that the understanding can be made so that you can get that connection all the way through the production process from goods in to goods out and beyond um, as we connect supply chain um, to really start to make those improvements. And we are just work for manufacturers. We're designed by manufacturers. We serve manufacturers. And um, as a result, we believe the system gets better and better the more clients come on board. But what does that look like in practice? Um, so we talk about data capture. It can be as simple as a few web enabled devices capturing start stop. Yes, I'm working, no, I'm not. It might have a further level of detail that says, um, I need to answer certain operating procedures. I need to do certain checks and measures. I need to add um, certain materials in or not. And it can get as deep and as granular as, as you want, but ultimately, whether it's a sensor, a handheld device such as this or a, a, a web browser that's collecting information, we can get that data from the shop floor and into the system. Um, as that is collected, we can visualize it. So against a works order, against a, a bundle or a batch, um, you can see how much what has been done, the progress through that process and capture time and other information as needed against each process and each product, which leads us to the opportunity as we build up to providing a, um, a digital passport of each product at each operation um, in terms of materials, time and audit trail of who and what has done, been done to that product. So starting to collect the digital information against each product. So we're, gate, we're visualizing that, but we can also visualize stoppages or delay points. It can also start to say this is late, not because the truck left half an hour ago and it wasn't on it, but it's late because it's going to take another two days to complete this and we're not at the right stage yet. So starting to give opportunities and flags of when things are going late soon enough for something to be done about it and learning when those flags are best placed is part of the uh, crucial basis of the product. That's going to drive you some intelligence, as we said, on that on that um, digitization journey. Get those insights, understand what's going on, 
and that can then feed back into your overall plan in the first instance. So we're optimizing against demand, feedback and understanding how long and what the best combination of elements are, and then improve those plans as they start to learn. And then feeding that back, you know, learning and pushing those plans back into execution so they can be implemented more. So the platform is what's available to our um, on our SMDH offer. And in true alignment with, um, with the Made Smarter program, it's open to a whole range of manufacturers. You know, it doesn't really matter the background as long as it's generally it's discrete manufacturing um, where there are people and products and process involved. Um, we have already served a, a wide range of clients um, in the UK and in fact globally with our product because it is cloud based. Um, and we can deploy pretty quickly uh, because it's one of the key elements to the project of what we're trying to deliver. So what does that project really look like? Ultimately, the Lighthouse program is enabling us to de-risk the opportunity to try this type of technology. So it's funding 10 free user licenses and the onboarding to cover a six months use of the product. It's essentially like a six months proof of concept. You know, we will get uh, a key area. It might be a key line or a key product or a key customer line. Um, for some of our clients, it's the whole plant um, is, is what we can set up. But we get that area identified. We'll get it set up. You will have some, you know, a couple of our guys will be on site helping set it up and put it in place because our aim is to get data flowing as quickly as possible. Um, it doesn't have to be great data. It just has to be some data with the uh, with the understanding of how it's operating. The great thing about the data scientists is they're feeding back to us. Oh, yeah, could we just collect this? Would it be useful if we could do that? So we are learning with the manufacturer, with ourselves and the data scientists at SMDH, what is the best opportunity to, to, to give these the KPIs that we need to improve productivity as an, as a, an overall? Is it realistic to expect to be able to standardize across these different types of operations? Can we create that, that the, the holy grail of a single number that standardizes UK manufacturing? I think it's unlikely, but we're getting to a few of them. Um, but it's really about uh, that complete collaboration, getting the data up and running, getting that fed back. Um, and it is anonymized. It's, you know, it's not it's not it's not looking at how you make a particular widget. It's not it's not looking at how the skill sets of an individual person. It's it's it is very generalized in, in a lot of ways. Um, but the feedback we can then re-identify and start to provide dashboards back to our individual customers so that they can make their own decisions as well. And, and it strengthens the power of the data. Now, the more we have and the more we have engaged, and we have 35 licenses, um, 35 opportunities under this, of which we have already allocated 12 now. Um, so, you know, we because it's although it's a year long project, we want to get that data flowing as quickly as possible because then we can start to combine it, start to offer best practice. And with as new clients come on board, we can go, actually, we know this is the best points to collect to give you the best feedback quickly so you can start to take that efficiency up to the next level. And I think. That is it in terms of the presentation. Now, I have not kept an eye on the uh, chat. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing for a moment <laughs> and uh, okay, take a look at the chat. Um, and then I can maybe um, answer a few of those for you. So there is one question in there on the chat. So I'll let you uh, have a quick look. KPIs available to, and um, reports. Very good. So we're, we're essentially, the first things we're looking at is overall productivity. So we're tracking um, um, person hours or the average sort of value point across across um, uh, labor hours and then the average value point across machine hours, um, which is very general. Uh, but then we can then bring that back to an individual client and go, actually, we can augment it with your own personal data. So then we've got the top level data we're providing to the SMDH to get the top level KPIs. But then we can bring that back, augment it with your own personal data to drill down to, OK, well, that's that sort of employee group or that's that sort of skill set. Um, we're looking at on time delivery. So 
um, estimated time to to complete versus actual um, and the variation and the things that make a difference. Um, we're also looking at um, actual productivity hours against expected productivity hours. So if you've got 100 people or 10 people, we'll have a capacity. If you've got X machines, we'll have a capacity and then we'll have the capacity you're actually functioning at and how that compares across um, not just our our licenses, but other customers as well in terms of their, their um, overall productivity. And ultimately, we're looking at ways we can improve this. So what, where the gaps are so that we can give that feedback. Perfect. Um, I've got a very, well, I've got a couple of quick questions. Um, I know this is, it's going to be quite vague because obviously every company that you work with is different size. How long does it usually take to get them up and running and implementing this system on average? I know, you know, smaller companies, it'll be quicker, large companies it'll take longer, but what, what should, is it, are we talking hours, days, weeks, months? What's, what's the general time to actually get some so, of that data flowing so we used to say that we could get someone up and running within a week and we have done um it's a uh, it, it's really ba based on the resources available um and the good thing about this is it puts extra people there we'd look at it within the first 60 days we'll have a system that is running and i'm getting that feedback internally not released out to smdh or anything else but that test environment and then that, that sort of the next month to really refine that so the customer's happy and when the customer's happy we can go live and and, and start to flow that perfect but if you took a week um, and went we're going to go and go for it you could do it yeah yeah because it's mean, cloud it is cloud-based and it's adapting to the system as well it's the resource and the time yeah. and all that involved yeah. to to get people up and running um yeah what I'll do in a second is unmute everyone and allow them to, you know, jump in and ask any questions as well. I did have one more. Well, I've got a few more, but I'll go with one to start with. What is your general view on productivity within UK manufacturing? We've done a lot of sessions recently where UK it's coming across that UK manufacturing is doing well. It is busy. There's lots of work flowing. There's lots of stuff going on out there. But manufacturers themselves, because they're so busy and because they've got so much going on, are very much looking at short term, quick wins, project coming in, need to get it out the door, keep the client happy. Right now, at this in this kind of current kind of climate, they're not necessarily thinking long term digitalization, data. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff, schools, education, um, training, all of that kind of external opportunities, which are more long term goals and visions. What's your kind of experience on that? Are you, are you feeling that people are swinging towards a bit more long-term and thinking about the productivity thing, or is it still very much get stuff out the door now? Um, I think, I think it's, it's a bit of both, you know, we, we have to get, we have to deliver, um, you have to, to respond to the market as it is at the moment. And it's becoming more and more agile and less forecast driven, um, you know some of the projects in terms of you know the supply chain and how we get the product at the point of consumption at the exact need time you know that just in time environment which used to used to be just in time um but was was less reliant on digital data now we say we can save 30 minutes per operator per day and that's the truth and it's generally because we tell we can enable people to see what they need to do next much faster much more effectively and they're not spending half the time running around going what do i need to do where's this how do i find the next part where's my next pallet um so we might like to say it's a clever system but ultimately you've got to get the right information to people more effectively so i think as we start to do that they are the quick wins and as that efficiency starts to show up, it gives the capacity for the production manager. If a production manager is only now dealing with exceptions because all the information is where it needs to be, they can then start to look at the improvements, other improvements that need to be made, where they maybe need new resource, where they maybe need more automation or digitalization. But you've got to give give the production managers a space because they're not it's not missing the productivity challenge because they're not trying to deliver everything that needs to be there it's just give them the space to look at the next step so we like to say with this project we can help give you a chance to lift your head up the, above the parapet a little bit and and see what's over the over the horizon 
um it's, yeah it's that almost coming up with a production plan what you can access low-hanging fruit what's the things that you can actually start moving now and you're not necessarily coming up with a where you're going to be in 10 years time and looking at it and being like that's terrifying i'm not i don't know where to start i'm not going to think about that so it's having that vision in your mind but then it's going right back to each individual stage and say what can we do right now today which is a short-term quick win but it moves us further along this journey and i think that's i mean that's the attitude that i'm starting to see it's that what can we do now which is going to help us which is that kind of low-hanging fruit and something like this seems like a very good opportunity um yeah i'm gonna allow there's a couple of questions from fanzi actually i might pick those up um Another fellow women in women in innovation from manufacturing, which is great. Um, so uh, it's a cloud based system. Um, so, yes, we can collect data from anywhere. Um, it can be accessed and analyzed from anywhere, although we are obviously we are in a single sign on environment, secure wise, etc. And it's not a direct access between our system and SMDH. They have. Um, MDEP, which is another four letter thing, <laughs> I can't remember what it stands for. Um, but so we've got uh, our security protocols to there, and then that's um, anonymizes and tags it, and then it goes to the data scientists and we get the feedback. So there are layers um, to support um, the security wise, but we can inside of the environment to serve the, um, the company, they can see and access their data from anywhere. Um, and also, so I think we've got cost of implementation and what happens after six months, which is a very good question. So we have the opportunity today, we're funding it for six months. Um, we do actually give you a 12 month license. There's nothing to pay for the first six months. And at that six months, you can either decide to continue with us, continue with us and SMDH or do nothing or not continue. So whatever has been learned and established over that time, you've got those three options, obviously, we hope and we're building in that future focus um, that that you stay with us. Um, then the opportunities are to, in, to expand it and, it and we are a per user base. So if you take up the first licenses, you get the, the process in place, you can then just expand out to the areas that you want on a user basis. And we've got full transparency of those costs and stuff ahead of time as well. Um, and tools funded, so hardware. Hardware is leased at the first six months process. Um, and then the opportunity is for that to be embedded um, after the SMDH element. Um, that's a .gov.uk rule assessment or whatever the process is in terms of, of hardware ownership is not actually owned by us or, or the other party. Um, there is a user agreement around the data that um, is also available if anyone wants to have a look at that. Perfect. Um, everyone does have access to unmute themselves and turn on their video if if there are any more questions. So if anyone's got any questions, feel free to either continue in the chat or unmute yourself and uh, feel free to fire them in the direction of Dolores. Or Cara, if you've got any, inter in, any questions for Cara as well. Definitely. We should actually, Cara, put into the chat the um, the SMDH yeah, Link. I've got that and my details. Um, yeah. So, so Dolores, I've got a question. So, if if anybody wants to get involved, how do they do they do they just get in touch with you directly? And what's like the elig eligibility criteria that they go through with you? Very good. So, um, in fact, I'll ask Lloyd to paste the link to um, sort of essentially we do a fifteen minute assessment. Um, Although the SMDH is focused on SMEs, it doesn't necessarily rule you out if you're not an SME because it might be a plant or a specific line focus. So we can always take a look at that. Um, but we have generally do a 15 minute chat just to make sure we think we're a good fit. Um, if we, having done that, I see a, one of the other lighthouses as a good, better fit, I will signpost you back to Cara um who can connect you with them as well so it does give you the opportunity to kind of have a bit of an um, an assessment further to that but after that 15 minutes we'd then normally book in and get someone to come in and see you because we do think that getting on site seeing the plan is a really good way of us going this is what we can do this is where we think your best data points to collect because ultimately we want to give you a win as quickly as possible 
Perfect. Um, I've got a question for you. How did you yes. get involved with the Made Smarter and the SMDH programs in the first place? Where would was it? Did they approach you? Did you find them? Did you jump on a call? How how did that initial opportunity come about? I think it's really important to be part of the Innovate UK and the Made Smarter ecosystem. Um, you know, we've we've done some of the Made Smarter projects, um, uh, adoption product projects. We've been funded through the Made Smarter Innovation product, um, which are two separate programs. Um, so some of it is a bit of, of, of finding the right people to speak to. Uh, but um, the I was actually invited onto the SMDH board as an industry expert, as an SME industry expert. So it's about them wanting to, to reach out and understand to the solution providers what were the challenges that, that were being faced. Um, but I think that the first phase is, is, is you can um, liaise with and, and register as part of SMDH and there's a there's now a community um, through that that will signpost kind of specific solutions, um, and yeah, yeah, it's kind of just being part of the ecosystem. And someone will tell you about something. I think pretty much probably first got involved because I saw them at a stand at one of the shows, um, which is probably where I picked up the first information. But that was a long time ago. I was going to say, yeah, I think like joining our, you know, we've got a community as part of SMDH and joining that's always a really nice thing just to sort of share experiences and have chats with like like minded, um, you know, SMEs and things. So I think that's, you know, and we, we do sort of have the webinars and training and things on there as well. So that's just a really nice place. Um, and that's, you know, you can sign up to that for free um and yeah and I, and I think to newsletters and stuff as well it's always good just to get them I know sometimes it's not always relevant but um it's good just to see what's what's on offer and what's about perfect thank you very much is there a is there an area on that and site I... a public area on that site for events and things that you've got coming up any other webinars and things or is it all is it like a sign up and then you get that information or so um, our, all our, our events go on our Eventbrite page. I'll pop the link in in, in the chat in a minute. Um, but then, yeah, if you just sort of sign up to the SMDH, um, like express your interest, you will get the, the um, you know, the newsletters and stuff then. And, you know, signing up to the community and the academy is all free. Um, and there's lots of really good resources on there. And we try not to spam you as well. We don't, you know, <laughs> sometimes it can be a lot. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh William, you had your I think that's hand up. William's got a question, see. Hello, William. Order now. Um, so looking at the software you've got there, so um, we do carbon reporting, part of carbon management. Have you any experience with this software so far of using that for possibly a carbon reduction program? Um we've had a lot of conversations around it. Um my vision, and I'm you know, happy to share it, is that that we, because we can capture time and and use at a, at a process and product level, that we yeah. can start to provide a carbon passport against products. Um, that alongside the plant operation information and everything else means essentially, with those two things together, you can pass a digital passport for scope three at a product level one, two, and three on, on through the entire supply chain. Um, but that first phase is um, we can, you know, the first phase we've talked about is if you're looking at productivity, what is the environmental space that you're operating in? What is the usage space that you're operating in? And what is the product that you're operating? And you can get that information at that three levels. Um, you can start to make make some some much more effective decisions around around the overall productivity. Yeah, because it's it's something that we look at, obviously. And any software that can help with that is always handy. Because yeah. it's, it's the accuracy that you need. It's actually the measurement, uh, time in motion, all the rest of those good things that you need to measure energy usage um, and any carbon offs, uh, carbon produced during the process as well, or, or one of the seven gases as such. Yeah. So, yeah so, it's, it's, yeah, so I was just wondering whether you'd actually done anything that was, yeah, 
We've done a bit of a showcase. We did some stuff over with the AMRC in uh, Preston, who've got building management system there. So they had the understanding information and they're running up, running our system through some of their additive manufacturing processes. Um, so it was really, um, so they started to look at what would they need to have and what information would they need to connect and where we'd need to bring that through. But ultimately, the first thing was just let's let, let's say when it's operating, where it's not. And one of the things that flagged up from that, for example, from their from their um, building management side was they had a fan on reverse, so it was it was not extracting it was it was drawing through so that was that was a functional maintenance issue but they knew yeah. that that's because we knew there was nothing actually operating we were able to to signpost that yeah so it's good for reducing energy usage as well for yeah any machinery that's been left on it will monitor it and you can yeah you can look at it and see like, why is that left on let's switch that off let's re or remember to switch it off yeah yeah first yeah. phase do something simple like someone just turn it off and the next phase yeah. automate it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you'd be surprised how many energy audits just involved in switching things off when there's nobody using it yeah no completely completely um customers clients people that are already going through this process with you or have got some of your other software and are already working with you do you share kind of case studies and examples and what's the kind of expected outcome of those that are already engaged and is there anywhere people can read up on that as and when yeah so um we have so a large part of this is that is that dissemination so at the moment it's it's, it's the aim and the goal of what's being um what they're looking to achieve through the program um we've got old case studies of clients using our technology on our website as well um and that's just totalcontrolpro.com. I think it's even on. No, it's not in my background. That's terrible. Um, um, but yeah, uh, we'll be providing case studies and actually doing more of those around um, with the SMDH as well in terms of use use cases. Um, and then I think it's important to know as well that this it might not be as as William was pointing out, not might not just be us, or it might o not only be us, and maybe that you start to layer in um, some some sensor information. You start to layer in, and part of the lighthouse element is that we're st from what we're learning, we can see where the best opportunities to collaborate across those op those those elements are. Um, it's also in terms of the funding does not class as funding for the organisation it's it's our funding so if it's part of you've got things like de minimis and state aid and that side of things it's not their contribution it doesn't class as their their state aid or de minimis it's ours um so it can be an early proof of concept to a larger grant as required to do a full digital rollout program brilliant that's yeah really useful as i say you put some links in the chat um if anyone wants to download those links to make sure that they've got them all instead of clicking on everything and saving it all, uh, you can just click on the little three buttons, I believe, if that option's still there, to download the chat. If not, I will put all of these links into the YouTube that we ended up end up sharing as well so anyone can access them from there. Um, has anyone else got any questions or comments that they'd like to make? just thank you sam and and Silence. cara for the time as well um no it's 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 great that the more of us talking about imp making these improvements in the manufacturing environment the better really absolutely um yeah if you if you need to connect with any of us obviously we invited you through linkedin so you're probably already connected with us in some fashion so that's probably the easiest way to get in touch with us uh message us on there um and we will happily help as i say i will be uploading this recording um and allowing you all to watch it back as you please so yeah please do get in touch if you want to learn more around what we're up to uh what delora is up to what car is up to then that's that's the best way to go thank you sam thank you very much no problem. thank you everybody bye bye